All right, I'm still setting up here, folks, but let me go ahead and write this all up. They got a Hemet, a Land Rover M2, a Dishka Hilux. Okay, we can just bundle that up. So they get an M2 Hilux, a uh, DSK. What's that other one? An M2 Land Rover. And transport. While well, Blue Four has a static cord. <laughs> the single static cord that could. Oh, that's freaking brilliant. Let's get that saved in here. Go to our map command. That's going to be desert, which. I'll be really curious to see how they built this because Desert is a very small map. It's only like two to, by two or no, it's I think it's four by four actually. Uh, let's see, mission, multi, music. Let's do music next and then I can work on the multi here. So we're gonna be playing Walk in the Park because I think it's a nice casual song to cover everything. Music volume should be good. all set now i need to make the multi here so where's the fnf discord so i can post it when i'm done cool let's go ahead uh, hit the save button here i decided to start the stream a little early just to showcase what i do a little bit in the background we're up to about 83 players got a few people poking me as well with various things Yeah, so it's just going to be Nem on the ground here, which is fine. Where is the multi thingamajig to put? Cool. Uh, that is all set. All right, that should be good. All right. Oh, no, you don't work today? You have an off Friday? Nice. All right, now I'm gonna end some processes in the background. I don't need GIMP open, which for all you perverts out there, it's an image editing. Actually, you know what? No, if you're already thinking that, it's probably not gonna help the definition anytime soon. Yeah, we should be good. And yep. Maple, we did just start the stream. Also, Bearded Lord didn't see you there. How are you doing? Hope everything is okay. I am just managing quite a few little things here. And making sure everything is going a-okay. Oh, shoot. I don't think I'll be able to turn that off. Don, can you go turn off the caffeinate command if you don't mind? Because I don't have a thing of uh, caffeine down here with me. I just have regular water for this one. And let me go ahead and section this off for EU highlights from this one little sticky note I have right here. I can put my GoPro aside. Ooh, my basement is so freaking clean right now. Um, I've got the carpet mostly knee knocked in. Um, probably gonna get that in after the NA branch. Because uh, I'm either going to do Daisy between FNF, NA, and EU, or after at A, I'll pr try to shoot for in the middle to bridge the streams together. But yeah, we should be A okay in that regard. Then I've just been cleaning out the uh, the basement here. I did my green screen away. I'll have to. I want to get that all ironed actually, and then um, I'll probably store it for now because the projects I want to do with it kind of faltered. You know, good ideas, good intentions, but I just, once you finally set up all the equipment, you let life take uh, everything away from you and whatnot, and you just go ham. But yeah, no, everything should be pretty good in this regard. Someone else just DM me, that might be Nemesis. No, it's Reaper, okay. Let me add him to the multi, awesome. Now I need to go back into Discord and edit the multi page. All right. Now 
I'm so glad you can't see this other screen. Anyway. Edit that. And then send the new one to Nemesis who wanted it. Cool. Scandy number one. Hey, Navs, how you doing? All right, we got about 90 players for tonight. Should be interesting. A decent high number for FNF here. And I appreciate it, Don. All right, first round is about to begin. Uh, overall, I also have, uh, you know, the uh, both greenhouses set up. I'm thinking probably next week we'll put an update video. I'll show you guys what's growing in there. Uh, a few things I'm gonna transfer from outside to inside. Uh, the peas will hopefully be ready to go um, by then because we tried uh, streaming outside. It didn't work because uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the thing got intercepted. The signals for the Wi-Fi from my phone got uh, intercepted and it degraded the stream to the point it broke it down, which is unfortunate. Um, and then when I tried starting the stream uh, where my other greenhouse is in my utility shed, uh, same thing, it was just due too deep in the house to not allow for a good Wi-Fi connection to allow for that stream. So I'll just be showcasing what I'm growing um, next to the door in my basement. So yeah, that's fun. Uh, and then for now, because I'm changing how I'm doing the growing uh, in my back room, um, I have an extra thingamajig to grow until I decide to use it. But for now, I'm using that as a stand for electricity. Um, the uh, top light of the other grow house, I'll show you guys next week. But, you know, it's all good. Trying to get into more streams, just hoping I didn't miss this one. Yeah, Maple. Um, I mean, it's also been on me. I haven't been doing as much streaming as I normally do because my carpet flooded. So I've been having to spend a lot of time since last Saturday dealing with it. And now, you know, a week later, it's finally taken care of. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get on to this first round. Interesting. They made a throw. <laughs> what? What, what corn BS is this? All right, well, let's look at our mission brief here. It's a good time Saddam mission, so of course it's gonna be wacky. In the dark future of 2122, Gastown is the last surface stronghold of the Troglodyte Empire. <laughs> It finds itself under siege from the Great Khan of the West. Will Gastown weather the storm, or will it yet it be another victim at the behest of the Great Destroyer? Or is this some, um... Ah, oh, Stellaris BS here, man. <laughs> Area of operations, op four must shut off all data terminals controlling the underground city's oxygen supply. Wow, that's dark. Well, I guess it makes sense. I do like the zaniness Saddam is bringing with his missions, though. It really is adding some good flavor into FNF, so I hope the numbers will bounce back up to play these really cool missions. But otherwise, how terminals works is if op four interacts with one, a 90 second timer will start counting down. Um, there's only two terminals, though, for this one. Interesting. Uh, it said three in the mission description, but that's okay. Um, so when the defenders then interact with the terminal, should they, while the timer's counting down, it'll either pause or reset the terminal. I think for this one, it's pause, because uh, if it's reset, usually those are in sequential order. Otherwise, they'd say something in the mission. Otherwise, 15 minute rounds for safe start, 50 minutes for the whole round, you know, the whole deal. Only 60 fill, uh, fortify points, interesting. Uh, usually the default number is under 25, maximum view distance 600 meters, no magnified optics, nor NVGs. Medium anti-tank, both sides have RPGs and they have both a regular AT warhead and an HE warhead. That should be interesting. We're gonna start with Op4 actually. Op4 are your Iraqi insurgents, random camouflage. So they just got a lot of like random clothing. Uh, some of this, for example, is from um, Apex DLC from 2016. Uh, and then these, I think are from 3CB. But, you know, your little cheek on vests and then you're uh, <laughs> wrapped around uh, shem eggs there. At least that should make PID easier, right? Loadouts for Op4 are going to make mainly AKMs and AKS 74s. PM handgun for the secondary. Light machine gunner, aka the auto rifleman, is going to be getting the RPK. Medium machine gunner, aka the machine gunner, is going to get the PKP. 
Light anti tanks going to be the RPG-26 single-shot disposable uh, AT launcher. Recon is going to get the T-5000 for its sniper slot, and then the two suppressed shooters are going to get a choice between the AKS with 45-round AK-74 mags, which would be 545, or 20-round AS Val mags, which are chambered in 9x39. Really good CQC weapon. This kind of acts as the quote-unquote submachine gun, and then this gun acts as the uh, rifle. But I'm going to be honest, both of those guns are really painful to use in FNF. Grenades are the new meta. But otherwise, crew and aviation get a choice of either a PP-2000 or another AKS. Nothing in crew served weapons. Their assets include a motorbike. 21 motorbikes. Oh, my God. We are literally... We are literally going to Mad Max this bitch. I swear to God. 21 motorbikes, an M2 Hillux with a shield on the back, a fuel helmet. Interesting. Uh, an HMG Land Rover. Is that the one with the frontal machine gun as well? No, I do not see it. Okay. Uh, multiple different trucks and cars, an empty Ural, and then a Dishka car. Neat. By the way, their marksman rifle is more than likely going to be an SVD. I don't see what else it would be in. Yep, we see an SVD right there with an NPZ rail. So it's uh, got an E-Clan on it, for example. Otherwise, Blue 4, looking over at that faction, the uniforms are going to also... Wait, okay, hold up. No, 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 no. My bad. Let me scroll out. Oh, yeah, this is a massive custom map and Op 4 spawning way out there. Yeah, no, so this is the 2x2 two two kilometer one I was thinking of with the slight desert in the middle. Damn, Saddam, really putting in the effort today. Holy shit. This is great. And there's there's dead haining people up there too. Wow, that's awesome. Um, huh. Interesting. Well, I wasn't expecting to see that, but uh, I guess anything's possible in the future. Wait a minute. Am I hallucinating? I feel like I'm hallucinating, cause uh, huh. Okay. Well, I'm going to just write that timestamp down to review that later. Okay. Awesome. Blue Force settings. Uniforms are going to be uh, Altus camouflage. Nice. Loadouts are going to be G3s and M4A1s. Ooh. 7.62x51 NATO battle rifles with M4A1s. Not a bad combo. Machine guns. Holy crap. Okay, so we're going to have the 249 as the LMG. And then an MG3 as the MMG. Oh, that's brilliant. M136 is your single shot disposable AT launcher. Sniper gets the M40A5. The two suppressed shooters get a choice of two uh, 762 by uh, 51 NATO battle rifles uh, 20, uh, chambered in that. And then 20 rounds per through the, uh, they're both Mark 14s. One's just, you know, more modern than the other. And then you have an MP7 or an M4A1, which are pretty good choices. Assets, the one freaking cord with only 250 rounds across five boxes. Brilliant. I'd imagine their marksman rifle, yep, it's going to be the PSG-1. Uh, at least that's what I think it is. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm feeling. It's it's another 20 round 762 by 51 NATO battle rifle. Uh, Converted into a marksman rifle and casual just fell from a building. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at our roster. Shy is going to be commanding blue four buckets as the platoon medic. Hip, uh, <laughs> I looked at that and went hip out of HP. Mutant, excuse me, uh, is going to be the medic for X-Ray, Lolo the sniper, Sam as the 2IC, Galil as the squad leader, and Reaper's taking one of the suppressed roles. Uh, I don't know where the other suppressed shooter is. Interesting. Azariah leading Alpha 1. He's got a mark. He's got the Altus rifle. Did I miss a page? Yeah, I don't see that in the loadout, so that's weird. Maybe because they needed a GL rifle, and that one just not included, but it should be. Either way, Azariah leading Whiplash, Flying Fin, Nemesis, Cullis, Casual, Artisan, Perton, and Dobbs. Basically, your Scandi Recon representation for today. Azuki and Charlie leading Go Go Wise, Good Time Saddam, the Mission Maker, Tender Banner, uh, XD The, and Holton and Bonnie. We have Sanchez from 1RW leading Sanders, Strikeja, Hobo, Teleop, Firefly, and Azus. And then we've got Mitten leading Bendel, Gav, Rinter, Roche, Ducket, Cat, Pierce, and Shun. And then we have uh, Stottenberg on his own under Charlie HQ. 
probably merging under Charlie One later. Meanwhile, commanding the Onslaught forces, we've got Mr. Depso. I also call him Mr. Despacito. Sayak has his two IC, Sushi as his platoon, Medic Fred leading the X-Ray team, Mello as the Medic, Riccardi taking the T-5000, Tilsitter uh, being the two IC, and Xenon taking a uh, suppressed rifle as the AKS. There's only one slot now. Uh, unless both teams decided only to take one guy, because usually there's two slots, but they might have changed things up, which is interesting enough. Ash taking Alpha HQ, Alpha 1B led by Steve, with Banks, Arcor, Tackleberry, Ace, Wheaton, so, and Skip. Alpha 2B be led by Norris, with Nielsen, Bates, Morgan, Lurch, and Rory under him. Kane leading Bravo HQ. Interesting. Normally they separate it. Now, Stark did message me he made an A team. This is his A team. Falcon in a leadership role under Kane with Stark, Blam, Dooley, and Bayon. That is a kill team. Yuru leading uh, Charlie. Yeah, there's no Bravo 2. Ah, because Bravo 2 just merged with Kane. So it's Flux, Armin, Jesus, Patriot, K, Kieran, Roster all on the attacking side. Yuru leading Charlie HQ. Navy Chan leading Charlie 1 with Lakar 4, Leziak, Yosuno, and Deska Kaper. And then you have Charlie 2 being led by Ant with Heartseer, Tiro, Pinty, and Nikolai. And then you've got Delta being led by Pete with Thompson, Pro Hunter, Gogu, Rodrig, and Lusode. I just want to do something real quick. Yeah, Blue 4 literally only has four guys here, whereas Op 4's roster is literally like an extra two squads between Charlie 2, Delta, and some of Charlie 1. So that's literally like 11 extra people. And then you got Op4, they're starting to all form up their units over here, but damn, it's Mad Max crazy bonker shit here. You got a fallen over building there as well. Uh, a lot of skimpy cover here to work with pushing in. I'd imagine Blue 4 is going to try to capitalize on these top areas ASAP. Um, but it's going to be a lot of long range rifle fire here. So those marksmen and that sniper are going to be very very important but a lot of ruins working around here i do like the smoke effects over here this really feels post-apocalyptic it's crazy what a good mission maker can do because you gotta remember for fns statistics all of this shaded stuff is customly placed also breadshit if i didn't say it before i'm gonna say it again thanks for the 18 month resub uh if i missed it, i do apologize i've been so busy focusing on this but i hope you keep enjoying the operations and i hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario Malin, oh, Malin, you're Zeusing FNF now. Ah, I, I feel a little disdain you didn't ask me first, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, buddy. I get it, you're having to do admin shit today. All right, five minutes remaining. Terminal one is located over here now. Both terminals are marked for both sides. Uh, it looks like there was meant to be a terminal over here as well, but it was removed last second, but we still have it listed. So I guess that's just because of uh, player count being in the 90s. And then the other terminal is up here on this little mountaintop area. So Op4 is trying to get to those terminals to hack them. Blue Force trying to defend them. I honestly think this perimeter right here is going to be the most easily defensible one. You got a nice perimeter all around. There's a few different entryways in specific spots, but uh, Blue Force could easily do an all eggs in one basket strategy. Use their uh, fortified budget to get on the rooftops of these buildings and really lay down heat. But Op4 does have those heavy guns on their vehicles, which can easily penetrate through soft cover. So I'm going to be honest, especially with Op4's number advantage, this could really go either way. And uh, Casual's learning he can fly. Oh, so is Peyton. Well, he was. Perton. Wait a minute. They're evolving. I think that's just a, a texture glitch with that a specific texture there, which is quite funny. But hell, uh, ooh, wait. Helbanaz. Welcome. Just watch Wacky Races 2 and oh god, the VOD almost killed me. I need to do another Wacky Races uh, op sometime in uh, late August. We're almost about due for another one. I need to take priority with a few other things first, but yeah. I forgot to unplug her, because whenever Bloodwing's not in the house, I I rip that away. Oh, well. <sighs> oh, yeah, no, one of these teams is clearly going to win. 
I, I think the hardest part for Op4 is going to be getting their foot in the door, but once they take either position, I think they'll easily be able to steamroll the other. This one, there's less cover, but they'll get, you know, Overwatch capability. Whereas this one is a nice fortified position where they'll get rooftop access to Plink at, and there's some cover made here. I don't know, we're probably going to see some vehicle rushes, but I think Blue 4 has a uh, trump card with the HE rounds and the RPGs and the Marksman, but, you know, Op 4 has that too. Um, what is Blue 4's Marksman rifle, though? Oh, yeah, the PSG one. So they have 20 round Marksman rifles instead of 10 rounders. I don't know. Um... Considering the numbers, too, you got Scandi on defense, but Scandi is not a defensive team. They're really good at offense, like Papega, and that's why they're some of the top factions, because they usually cripple enemy uh, defenses. Whereas you have literally a kill team here within Bravo. You've got Papega on one team of Bravo, and then you have some of the best players in all of Friday Night Fights in the other half of Bravo. So if they are working together as offensively as possible, I think they might be able to overwhelm this southern position. So we're just going to have to see how this all plays. But I I would be leaning up for right now. But every time I've picked a side, I usually am wrong. So I'm not really going to say anything. I just know this is going to be a pretty bloody one. Uh, Delaroco watching me from work. Been needing to ask you some questions, but never been in a mindset to catch the stream. Yeah, feel free to ask them, man. I will try to answer them where I can. If I, if I, uh, if you don't see that I read them, just ask them a few minutes later. Maybe when I have a lull and everything, or you can wait till intermission. Uh, that would be the best time to ask questions. But if it's going slow, I'll read chat. Master Ninja, don't mind. I'm going to be in the TeamSpeak chat as a view of my mods and redownload. Um... You're good. If you're talking about FNF related stuff, don't worry about it because I'm not an FNF staff member. I'm literally just invited here to cast. Uh, they throw me out whenever they need to, and they have in the past, which I laugh about, but yeah. Oh, right. Devour. Sorry. I have a big list of DMs. Um, Devour don't do corpses, uh, because that's going to add more dependencies, and I might not want to use weapon and armor dependencies. I just want the structure. Let me do that. Now, if you want to make a version for yourself with that population for your own work, feel free. But for what I'm commissioning you to do, um, I don't want the added corpses of uh, stuff. I will do that myself, if you don't mind. All right, let's... Let's watch this Mad Max bullshit. And already, someone has died. Wow. I was literally scrolling in. Cake here, of course it's from Papega. Of course it's from freaking Papega. I can't literally take my eyes away from them when they're given a shit ton of vehicles because they will find a way to kill themselves. Not even surprised. We'll see if Malin responds him, but that's that's pretty funny. Ah, of course it's freaking Papega. I love it. Now you have this great migration here. I mean, yeah, if you bet Blue for that's a little ego boost right there. Oh, they have admin messages now. Yeah, so they noticed that the radar dome here was bugged, so it got walled off. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that's funny. Let's see if Malin goes and respawns those dudes. Looks like roster woke back up. Well, either way, you got Op4 now uh, dismounting on these small hills. Welcome to Mad Max, indeed. Already starting to see some fire go down. Now, interestingly enough, this is because Blue Four ran some dudes down here. Op Four's actually rushed up with some additional forces here. I'm not sure what they're gonna do in this regard. You got an AT4 out right here trying to line up a shot on that car. He's gotta be careful not to backblast himself against that debris. You got more Op4 swinging around. X-Ray also coming around as well. These guys taking some heavy GL fire. And there's the AT4 hitting. And that has killed 
half of this recon force has come up, and it's, it's pretty nasty. I think Wise was the shooter. Yep, so he has the vehicle kill, but because they died in the explosion of the vehicle, he won't be credited with those infantry kills. But now you got Op4 also deploying on the gas station. They're probably going to push from the gas station into this other AO, but they are a outnumbered force here. I get why Op4 split their numbers here. We need to see where they decide to commit the rest of their forces. Uh, GLs are a great thing to use right here, but Tendervane has got a good spot. It's a bandage. Why is still trying to put pressure on this individual group? Got another GL coming in. It's going to be just short. Literally a tick short there. But yeah, Op4 is going to be committing more forces to that rear line. You're seeing some explosions going out there. You might see some blue 4 GLs. And you're seeing another force now of Op4 pushing up. Not realizing that that force has been mainly taken out. Cake Gear has been respawned. Dooley has been knocked on con because Bravo is apparently being moved over to this position. This is going to give him some decent room to maneuver, but there's some pretty nasty Overwatch elements here. And they've got 249, so they've been taking damage. So wow. No, is this... Yeah, so it's a squad leader, a marksman, and an MG guy. That can pretty easily suppress that area. So Blue Force divided its forces quite well. You only have one guy alive up here. Reinforcements are coming up, but they are taking fire from their flank because that position never got cleared out. Now you're starting to see these guys getting knocked. One guy is dead, one down, another down, a third down. This position right here is going to change the game, folks. These are just two G3s, but they slap with that 762 by 51 chamber. So they're waking up only to be tapped again and trying to get into the car. They have no idea where they're being shot at from. So this early advantage here of knocking the number advantage down. Let me rephrase that. So the number advantage Op4 started with, with, you know, a good extra 12 people is already getting knocked pretty hard. And Op4 is just carelessly moving around some small positions. We got Norris now trying to suppress Wise here, who's turned around. He's going to be able to bipod his gun and put shots up there pretty easily, though. Yep, so he's going to watch him down. That's going to alleviate the pressure on that position, but I think Tenderbanger is going to continue to keep it pinned for the moment. You're seeing more guys getting shot here. Driver taken out as you got these two guys now trying to run up. I mean, again, this is all about that marksman fight. Over here, you've got Papega with the best troops in the game here trying to do a smoke push that is allowing them forward momentum here but they're going to have to keep that up all the way to the perimeter wall at this point blue four just have some really really good positions here and i don't think op four is going to be able to find a way to get into either spot really we needed to see marksmen on the rear line and some heavy guns fire at where blue four was suppressing from and we're not seeing that level of support and that is really costing Op4 right now. As said, it's not looking good for Op4 right now. Why is getting a nasty GL shot from Norris who repositioned with the 50 cal. Another GL going in. Tender Banner again in a pretty good spot as the rest of his group uh, folds in. Uh, Della Rocco, I'll talk about it in the intermission. Double tapping Wise, but. Damage has already been done, in my opinion. Looking at the skull count here, you have Charlie mostly taken out. A half of Op 4's Delta is down. 2IC is down. Blue 4 starting to take a few casualties from afar as the uh, marksmen are starting to pick people off on these rooftop areas, even their sniper from the looks of it. Got some tripwire. He was trying to set up tripwire flare mines, but it didn't work out for him. This means that there are tripwire HE mines around as well. And then you got Cat here chilling with that uh, cord, watching the front gate ready to blow anyone's head off. I'd imagine that's uh, the best place they can put it because they put it in an overwatch position, a marksman would just snipe the gunner out. So I think this is the most important fight right now because this has the most uh, blue four garrison here and they've got overwatching support. And these are some of the best troops Op4 has. You got X-Ray in the back here with the sniper. And they're trying to vault him to a decent position. And instead, he just got shot. 
So this force, though, if they take enough casualties and this group is able to hold, they'll be able to turn around and engage. But Patriot just got up here on his own and took out two dudes, tried to put some fire on Azuki, who immediately pulled back, realizing they're under fire. Now we're waiting to see. Looks like Potato woke back up. Patriot might have noticed really good grenade throw that's going to go up the ridge a little bit. Knocks him back out. Azuki wasn't close enough for it, though. Another grenade being thrown, but Patriot immediately gets some flanking fire. Azuki getting some fire back. This is going to make the difference because that means this blue four group cannot suppress op four down here but we also have some blue four guys counter attacking down here this is tell off and sanchez but flux coming around wins that 1v1 grenade would have knocked him out anyway but at least these guys are down flux could still be medics up so that was a great first breach there azuki going on the offensive here trying to get some shots on patriot as he now pulls back Looks like he's going to be able to get away with that and rejoin the push right here. So Op4 making some good headway here. Uh, Potato woke back up. He's throwing some grenades down, but otherwise taking suppressive fire. Op4 is still maneuvering around here, but we still have Tender Banner back here. Looks like he's looting bodies. He's on four kills. He could still stay behind this Op4 line and do a lot of damage. <clears throat> the question is, will it be enough? I think Blue4 is going to be able to keep Op4 pinned down in this location. You see them all kind of moving around in this kill zone. But they need Op4 to pretty much come up from the flank, but they're going to be too busy with this position here. You got a Hunt IR round coming in. RPG rounds being fired in here as well. Let's check the skull count. So definitely more skulls now are being seen on the Blue 4 side, but Op4, only a handful of new ones. I want to say just a few. I can count them on a single hand, but... Look at this. We just had what might have been an RPG or a GL detonate over here that took out three people. It's just because there's so many different defensive positions Blue 4 has on this line. They all wake up, but immediately one of them is headshotted. I think Op 4 just divided too much and tried to take the entire AO. And it just didn't work out. They should have just done flanking attacks on one objective and gone from there. Even sandwiching this AO would have been helpful because all the eyes that were up here would have been forced to turn around and deal with the closer threat. So by squeezing this position, it would make it a little bit tougher to do. And I love how they made a little custom sign there. But in all honesty, I think it would have been better to attack this position first. Get some reconnaissance out of seeing that there was only a few guys. Suppress it with heavy machine gun fire. And then literally as one group keeps them pinned, have another group charge up at the base of the hill and push up aggressively. Yes, it would have been costly, but that would have gotten your foot in the door to then get the high ground. And then you could have had both the high ground to overwatch and then sent the forces on the left flank and pushed this main gate. But instead, Op4 has deemed for a two-pronged attack on two, or I guess two separate attacks, uh, attacks actually, on two separate objectives. I think they're eventually gonna win this fight, but look at this. He's gonna slowly start picking people off. And I think he might actually be getting friendly fired here. So if he can continue to move up here, yeah, he's on six kills, and he is taking his time. Seven kills. Hits Tackleberry once. He gets down. Going for more. Tackle has no idea. Should be on seven now, yep. My god. No one ever checks through, but again, he's getting fired at by Blue 4. So he, I think, as long as he doesn't get blue on blue here, is going to be able to turn this completely around. But because blue four is trying to, you know, PID him there improperly, that's tough. This attack has mainly failed. I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys. I, I honestly think this is it. Blue op four doesn't have enough to push up this flank. They have numbers coming up here. They'll probably end up taking that position. I just heard an HE mine go off. They just, they tripped their own HE mine. And it somehow also knocked Azuki out.
Brilliant. Absa freaking lootly brilliant. It happens! Welcome to FNF! Friendly fire just has a lot of creative ways of showing up. Yeah, so these guys get caught in GL traps here. I mean it's it's messy down there. Op 4 just divided too much. I got what Depso was trying to do, but it just it just wasn't enough. Now you got Op 4 slowly starting to move up here. The few remaining defenders are trying to hold, and now we're seeing them charge up. You see that Op 4 is kind of down to colored smoke now. Oh, but Wheaton and Ash coming around have just taken out two Blue Four defenders here. And I think Sushi found Tender Baner and just took him out. Yeah. Oh, give me the give me the number count. There we go. Yep. So that's a kill. So that's turned around for Op4 to get their foot in the door finally. It's just do they have enough to continue on numbers wise looking at everything? I think Op4 still outnumber Blue Four slightly. But hold up. Is this Falcon? No, it's Patriot. Dobbs gets blown away. Nemesis saw that. Artisan takes a shot in the back. Oh my god, the juke! The juke! Nemesis trying to counter juke! But he can't! He gets shuffled on the floorboard! Oh! <laughs> and then Artisan comes in for the revenge! Oh! Nemesis, the old man, got his footing cut right to put him in place for Patriot to blow his head off. But at least Artisan comes around to get the recovery. Hack was initiated on this terminal and paused by Azuki. Azuki down to his handgun. Taking fire from every direction. Azuki diving to the ground. Ground command eliminating Azuki personally for Op4 as he now runs in to initiate the hack. I gotta wonder if there's an explosive trap in here. I don't see one. Depso's going to reinitiate it. There we go. Op4 has control of the position here. Double taps going in on his body. We got a handful of guys down here. They still have the 50 cal car. That could still provide some assistance here. Op4 are actually starting to reposition. They don't have a lot of guys left over here. So now we're probably going to see a hill tie, uh, hillside push from the top. Blue 4 and Op4 number-wise, it's, it's looking pretty even. MG3 does beat Open Field Falcon. Why do you think they used them on D-Day? Of course, the MG3 is... Uh, has a different uh, caliber than the MG42, but they're pretty much the same gun. And you just blew up. Wow. So instead, they're gonna get on his motorcycle. Are we seeing RPGs being launched? Yeah, they're trying to use RPGs to take out the motorcycles. And I think he actually did some wheel damage here. Cause I noticed he slowed down a bit compared to the other motorcycle. Now you have some attention turned to the top of the hill here. Hack completed. And we're only 26 minutes in out of the 50. We're down to 34 minutes. I love how Opera just blindly driving around here to distract them. Ah, the wheels are down to Riccardi gets knocked out. Mello running behind the pipe. And over here, Op4, I mean, they're going to have to tread really lightly here because this is still a massive kill zone, but there's not a lot of Blue 4 defense. You only have them up here. A single marksman could easily start picking off these guys, and there's a lot of room for them to make those shots. And as I say that, you have that marksman right here trying to work on him. It's Ace. GL goes in there, though. Box one dude out. But yeah, Blue 4 just shift their attention. In time, I think they'll be okay. Marksman wakes back up. Ooh! 
That one, I think, just hit the outside. Oh, there it is. I was waiting for them to get ranged on that because these guys have the high ground. So they don't have to really uh, make any adjustments. They just have to range it flat. <clears throat> we could still see Bendel and Gav wake back up. As I say that Bendel does, Gav might take another hot second. Nope, he's dead. As a smoke is deployed up there, he's still got the MG3, but now this is allowing for some Op4 guys to get in danger close to this position, which I know is normally only tied to airstrikes, but guys, they're in the zone. More Op4 to follow. Right on Main Street here. Right, I'm trying to watch to see what they do. You got the cord out. Now it's trying to shoot at the hilltops here. It's firing at Arcor. Oh, it just took out Arcor's legs. And there goes Arcor. Now you got the 50 cal traveling up here. It's suppressing the rooftops, but there's been a lot of people that have died on the rooftops up here. Again, open ground like this, it's always a marksman fight. Oh! The last guy up here tries to get his RPG out, and he's immediately blown away by that 50 cal. But this is what I was waiting for, that 50 cal support. And it's now being used at the last second, and it's allowing for all of uh, Op4 to pretty much get up onto the line here, the wire, if you will. And it's doing a lot. Artisan somehow learns to lag switch himself forward, only to get blown away by Leziak and Tackleberry. Oh, a thrown satchel goes off. That killed at least one of the blue four dudes and definitely shocked the other two as they now reposition. Oh, Flying Finn with the creative little grenade toss. That's gonna get them both. I just saw shrapnel go into Tackleberry's face. Finn trying to be cheeky here. Manages to do it, but takes some grenade damage. <coughs> Got blue four over here. I think they just took out one remaining op four guy on the left side, but in terms of where op four are in this positioning, they're rather close, but blue four is still weathering this storm. We had a lot of op four pushing up, and now it's kind of faltered. This can swing either way. The one weakness right now, though, is that the terminal is right there. I don't know if he got friendly fired or not. The angles, I think it came from the rear there. But no one is on the terminal except for Cat here. You have a lot of blue for out of position. And Finn gets another great shot. I'm telling you, these 7.62x5.1 rifles are just slapping people today. Bendal wakes back up. He goes prone. He's going to need to bandage himself. But... You just got to keep everyone wrapped around right here. This is where the final fight's going to be. Send in GOAT Team 6 now. A oh, little bit of delay on my messaging there. Red Rip, thanks for the 16 month resub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you're getting a nice kick out of this little scenario. Now, here's the thing. Op4 is just trickling up with their remaining forces. I think Blue 4 has this. Because now as Op4 only go up with single or just small groups, they're just going to be picked up as they start moving up to the wire here. Now, if Blue 4 tries to reposition, though, the... Marksmen and heavy assets are still going to pretty much pin them down here. We have some blue four guys starting to reposition to the north. Yeah, heavy entrenched fighting right now. So he just reloaded that box as you saw him pull on one of the things there ending the animation. Yeah, he's trying to pick off Bendel right now, who's using the smoke grenade to keep himself concealed. <clears throat> and now you got the cord firing. I think because he saw the skyline of the dude running left or right under at the A2 position, which is Morgan. 
Sushi doing a very wide flank here, but Blue Force still has some rear defenders. Oh, Whiplash with the 249 covering that opening. That's going to be a toughie. Oh, and the, the wire pole that connected all these corpses got knocked off. That's cute. And down to himself right here. I think his best bet would be go to crouch, lean his weapon on the left, and just uh, use GLs. Bates is going to be cautious with that Vic and pull it back. A lot of smoke grenades are now being thrown to obscure the vision of that 50 cal. But that's also going to obscure the vision of a lot of the defenders. This is Op 4's opening to move in, but let's quickly have a look. Let's do a final number count here. 2, 4, 8, 9 blue 4 to 3, 4, 5, 6 Op 4. Blue 4 have the defensive advantage. They have the numbers advantage. Three people over... And they've now repositioned to directly cover that terminal. It's going to be really difficult for Op4 to take this. Got some more GLs being fired in over here. 50 cows ranged in. But that smoke again going to keep with the obstruction uh, here. Got some grenades being thrown around. Mutant. Fortunately for him is saved by the corner. Sushi, meanwhile, fighting Whiplash. Grenade thrown downhill. Unfortunately, it's only a smoke. Whiplash trying to push his position. Sushi needs to be throwing frags down there. Firefly throwing a lawn frag. This frag might get uh, Whiplash. Yep. You can't push uphill like that because if they start throwing frags, you're dead. Unfortunately. That a, wow, Reaper with a great grenade throw and then followed by a not so great grenade throw, but he managed to knock Morgan out with that one. Another grenade throw, perfectly bouncing off the top in the corner, knocking Reaper out. I love these grenade plays now. Sushi comes up and double taps Whiplash. You hear that MG firing. Might have been on Morgan right there from Pendle. More grenades coming in. There's smokes to obscure, uh, obscure more vision. We need to see Ant make a play and come in. He might be overly cautious right now. Morgan's welcome back up. He's going to pull some bandaging. <coughs> Nielsen could cover. He's got the PKP as well. And there is some good smoke down. Or they can help each other bandage. A little risky, but Mutant's going to be doing that for Reaper as well on the other side. Regular hydrate, you got it. Twenty-five minutes have passed. It is the halfway point in the round. This is probably going to be open in the next five, uh, unless Ace just tries to camp the rear. But I think he's going to eventually have to come up himself. I think Op Four in a really good position to at least get the touch on the terminal. That's going to pull all of the attention to it. Whether or not they hold is my personal question here. Bendel also has a pretty good Overwatch position on it. But he's going to have to come out over here. Another grenade being thrown. Wow, shrapnel hit all the way up here on a window. Some blind fire. Long grenade throw by Reaper. That could change everything. Only minor damage. Another grenade being leaned out there. Doing more damage to Op4, but no kills. And then you got Sushi coming around right here. Surprised he did not pick up the 249. He sniped Cat with a single shot from his AK. Again, this could go either way. But eventually, Op4 is going to need to make a move. Cat getting double tapped. Sushi crawling around, trying to stay hidden. Firefly might see him. The fire. Wow! Sushi with a one tap. Finn countering. Gets a hit on Sushi, but it was on his back. And Sushi's going to crawl out. Bendel trying to turn the tie here. No, I think that was Cola's firing, actually. Yeah, he has an MG-3-2. Uh, and he just absolutely annihilates Sushi Bendel with Cola's both having MG-3s get him. Morgan pushed out and got eliminated by something. Uh, I think Reaper's pushed out. He was uh, then taken out, but he was able to get Morgan. 
Grenades being uh, thrown. Wow, right caught on the pole. No, it was a smoke grenade. Would have been a great frag grenade. Mutant throwing some smokes out to delay. Uh, more smokes going out. But again, being very, very cautious here. Op for it down to two people with a third down. Blue for it down to five. Bates is going to go for it. No, it's a grenade trap. You throw a bunch of smokes, and then you throw a grenade to make them, uh, if they decide to run in, they'll get blown up by the grenade. Morgan wakes back up. He's going to be caught bandaging. I just noticed all these butterflies around him. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. More smoke going out. One man clutch? Hmm. Ace finds a way to climb in. I think Dobbs is looking for him because he heard that. Bates and Morgan both back up now. Let's see where some other Op4 guys climbed in. Yeah, Ace is going to be incredibly cautious. If he spots Bendel, he's probably going to wait to take him out first. I think, does he look up and see him? Looking downward now. The question is, is Bendel going to now poke his head over and do Overwatch? He's got an empty RPG. could drop that in all honesty, but that would be an easy noob tube. Ace might be in a good position here. Yeah, he dropped it. He could get a rear shot on Dobbs. Back of the head headshot. Mutant might turn around. Good enough. Bendel's now going to look over. And Ace is screwed. Yep. As I expected that to play out, to be honest. There's the double tap. Dobbs woke up, he ran down. Now you got Bates and Morgan, they're gonna just flank around here. And that's just gonna extend this round, but I'm pretty sure Blue 4 has it. They got Bendel in a great position. They've got defenders actually on the objective. They have two free floaters moving around, trying to find the remaining Op 4 guys. Um, and then the other one just covering the rear. I think, I think this is it. Rip the dream, I know. It was close, it was very close. But unless they spot Bendel and get him with like a first shot headshot, I don't see how they're going to be able to turn this around. And that's assuming they get past Cullis back here, who has another MG3. And we saw what they did to Sushi back here. They literally tore him apart. So this is just going to be a waiting game. So let's see. Um, Del Roco, are you still here? Just shoot me a message. I'll go over communities. Um, I'm only biased to the communities I know about, but... Actually, hell, just shoot me a message on Discord. I'll give you an in-depth thing with all their Discords. Since it's, I can describe them all I want, but they're, in the end of the day, you're the one that has to go in there and see if you like what they do and whatnot. I'm not giving up hope. I'm just saying <clears throat> the, how much damage these both, uh, both of them have taken. <clears throat> Are any of them a medic? No. So the times they've been down... Uh, from grenades and waking back up, they've been actively bleeding out, which means they have less blood, which means if they get knocked out, they're very unlikely to wake up. Yeah, Roko, shoot me a message on Discord. I'll get you sorted. I don't mind giving anyone a billion communities to play on, and, you know, pros and cons. Hydrate. Look, I, I hope they do make it, because that would be pretty freaking epic to watch. But Cullis needs to be picked off immediately. Bendel needs to be headshotted. Uh, and even fight with Dobbs and Mutant. And then I think the last guy is going to be too far out of position to be worth a damn. Because uh, Finn's going on the aggression, uh, aggressive here. I mean, he's on 10 kills, though. And he's starting to get on an Overwatch position from outside the facility. So the fact you have a guy on 10 kills here. But again, it's the Marksmen. Marksmen were quintessential for this scenario.
It's immediately fly, uh, getting fired upon. Bendel knocks him out. Oh, knocks him down to his feet. I thought he was going to get a knockout down uh, there. Morgan now with the 249, which I'd imagine is whiplashes. Spots Finn and takes him out. You don't need to be a marksman with single shots if you can be a marksman with a machine gun. <laughs> That was a beautiful spray. It's now 2v4. Bendel in a really good position here. Going to be overwatching from this corner. He's waiting for Morgan to come out. Cullis now also watching that one spot. Cullis, I think, spotted Bates and tries to get a shot on him. And Morgan gets spotted by the other MG3. It's a good effort for Op4. He's trying to suppress him to make sure he stays knocked out. That's quite a few hits there on the leg side. I think that's it. There goes Bates. Morgan getting double tapped. It's those legs hits. They're not going to kill him. They're just going to make him bleed out faster. I think Bendel's also giving some general suppressive fire, but that's, that's GG. Again, I don't think Morgan's going to wake up because he's already been down multiple times. I mean, yeah, it goes to show you. I mean, Morgan got that kill through fire, fire through volume. Cullis and Bendel are getting these kills from fire through volume. There you go. They're calling it. Now, any match where it gets to literally the single digits or the digits you can count from your damn hand. Um... Delaroco, I'm gonna be honest with you, buddy. There are very, very few communities out there that don't run things through Discord. I'm sorry to say. Uh, website communities are very rare. And the only one I know of is Milsim. So, yeah. Sustained assault? Uh, you're free to check Reddit find a unit, though. Because um, if you don't have Discord, you can't check the official Hermethery's Discord page either. All right, let me go ahead get to our extensions page so I can get to the stream manager page so I can get a few ads going. If it'll load, that'd be really, really nice of you to load, sir. All right, let's get that playing. So, uh, let's see. We're just waiting for the next mission to be selected. It was very close. Really, it could have gone either way. But Op4, did, they did two separate attacks. They should have done a single attack with elements supporting each other. And I think that would have made the difference because they just attacked too much of the AO at once and it nullified their number advantage. Now we're just waiting for the transition. There we go. Suma. Every time I mention this map, someone tries to make a Suma these nuts joke or something. All right, this is round two. Where? Ooh, there's a mortar in play. Blue Four is attacking two Op Four sectors. Before has two mortars. Wow. Well, Op4 has... Okay, okay. Dishka UAZ and two static dishes. All right. Damn. All right. 
Send in Goat Team 6 now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Della Roca. Well, feel free to message me anytime, especially over Discord. Commands will always work in the chat. Uh, actually, I do have it on emote only when I'm not streaming. For security reasons, because fun fact, if a bunch of people go into your chat when you're offline and start saying a bunch of cuss words, uh, they can then report you to Twitch, and Twitch's uh, bot will just see that all those words were said, and then the person that runs the channel gets banned. So we keep it in emote only to prevent shit like that from happening. This job is wonderful and has absolutely zero fucked up things about it. Zero. They're all just features. And if one of those things happens to you, you're pretty much screwed out of the job. Ha! Isn't that fun? Alrighty. Sullivan, thank you so much for the 8 month resub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations and I hope you get a nice kick out of the scenario. Web Knight just released the Half-Life mod? Nice. All right, that moves up a few things in my timetable. Uh, so we'll probably start seeing some of those ops mid to late August uh, across my own framework. Uh, hell, we might actually see one next weekend. Uh, so not this coming weekend, but the weekend after for the uh, Sunday op. I literally picked up my fr uh, phone to text someone and then someone else just gave me a DM. Take my phone off the charger. Fun fact, whenever anything is fully charged, if it has a battery, uh, once you get it up to like 95%, you should take the damn cord out. Because uh, when you keep it charging after 100%, it does uh, basically a cycle system that uh, degrades the battery. I actually don't know the exact science behind it, but it, it basically degrades the battery over time. So uh, if you want your phone to maintain its uh, full charge for longer, um, in terms of the shelf life of the battery, just charge it up to 95% and go. And if you really need to, have a mobile battery pack and, you know, manage it that way. I'm going to be honest, uh, whenever I'm out and about, I have two mobile battery packs. Uh, one for me and then one for anyone who asks. Also, I make sure to show them that it's literally only a battery pack because there's some people out there that put little uh, microchips in theirs and steal information. Ah, don't you love this damn world? The deformer mod where you can change the level of ground anywhere on the map? Yes, Chief. There are a few things I'm debating on with that, but that's kind of in the shelf space right now. So there's, there's, uh, how do I put this? I've got my master document of every op suggestion I've ever had. Um, that's up to like 400 pages right now because it's just been growing and growing. I then have what I call my shelf, which is the first 20 pages of that document which are op ideas that I really want to do. They're just awaiting certain things or, you know, they're in the process of being run. Uh, and then the first page is literally what I am doing, like what my focus is going to be for the upcoming month. So I've just redone everything for August. Um, I got to move web night stuff from the shelf to the first page. Uh, and I'm probably, I don't want to shelf Stargate because I also want to do Stargate too. So I might just have a bunch of stuff on the first page and just run it where I can. And then when I feel like I'm done with it, I'll move it back to the shelf or I'll move it to um, just a random page. But Deformer is also a little niche. It's really good for making like hidden bunker systems and shit, but it's only gonna be useful until we get the next Arma update, because right now in the dev branch, there's a command that changes the maximum heights of when you go into the parachute animation. By default, it's 100 meters. Now, the only way to get around that is to add an area trigger, where if you go into that animation, it automatically resets you out of that animation, but it still causes a delay because you're, you have to go through those animations. So that mod, you can literally set the skybox height of the, um, 100 meters of if you're below 100 meters, you can jump out or something, you just fall into the ground. But if you're above 100 meters, you go into the parachute fall animation. Uh, you can change that per scenario. So you can make a giant 
complex. You can use the deform mod to deform the terrain to fit that complex, and then you won't have to worry about any of that, which is something I really do need for some offs coming up. Hmm. Really do need that. Because the Resident Evil hive is very, very thick. All right, it is, it's a thicky, thicky boy. <laughs> All right. Cycling my fan. <clears throat> but yeah, there was a lot coming up. There is no artillery computer either. Here's one thing I want to check. So, Blue Four is uh, the group with the mortars. Does Stark have access to those mortars? Because he's the only person I've seen in FNF use a mortar properly. Well, no. Him and Bay are the only two people I've seen use mortars properly. So where is 4IB Stark? He's op four. Where is Bant? Also op four. So I don't I don't trust the mortars. I honestly don't. Rest of the assets wise, I mean, you got M2s, excuse me, a single M2 on Blue 4, Op 4 have some defensive M2s. <clears throat> I mean, if any, if the last round is anything to go on, you're not gonna see a lot of those used anyway, um, at least on the attacking side. Uh, defender side definitely used a few and they had them in some pretty niche positions that worked out. Yeah, that, that should be it, you know? Otherwise, guys, this will be round two. Uh, we will be covering round three. Here, while I have a moment. I want to check Discord real quick. I want to see if Bo's server went back up for day Z because if it's still having issues. Uh, let's see. Yesterday at 5.48 p.m. All right, cool. Yeah, it's up. So I can uh, play DayZ in the transitionary time. <clears throat> we'll see if I'm in the mood, though, because I'm going to be honest, debating everything. I might just wait till after the NA branch to play DayZ simply because I have a lot of chores to do. We're remounting the carpet back into the wall. There's some vacuuming I want to get done, and I want to do some of this stuff. Yeah, because Bloodwing's coming back from an anime convention today because Otakon is in DC right now. Uh, she's not coming back to like 9 or 10, which means during the intermission of FNF, EU, and NA, I'll have some time to do some vacuuming because she's going to be like absolutely pooped. So I just want to make sure everything's ready for her to just sit down and relax. Kitchen's clean. Basement is mostly clean. Uh, but I need to vacuum upstairs and the basement. So... I might not stream DayZ today. If I don't stream it today, I will. I'm not going to be here Saturday, so I'll make sure I stream it Sunday. But, you know, I work from home. I'm also the house husband. <laughs> it's how things go. Cart's not overly damaged. Well, that's good. Who won? Oh, my God. Who won the last round? Blue 4 did. Barely. I'm hydrating. Don't worry. Just gotta give me a second. All right. AOIs, yeah, so Sector 1's first and Sector 2. This is pretty much gonna be a line sweep. Normally these rounds, uh, since we've already seen one or two like these, one I think on Suma recently for the actual bottom right corner, of the map. It wasn't Suma, it was a different map, but it might have been the same, I forget. But yeah, it was it was down here in that area right there. These normally take only like 30 minutes, which is good. That gives me more time to do those errands. All right, I got a battle bus. Briefing is by Lusode. Lusode has just included some temperature data, some wind data, the sunrise and sunset, and the moon fullness is at 4%. How quantitative. 
All right, sectors. Uh, sector one has to be taken first, then sector two. It is set to sequential. Uh, over time, will be initiated if op four is in the last sector and there's still blue four in there. How a sector is captured is if all the defenders are dead or knocked or unconscious or in a vehicle or turret, as in in the entity itself, not under it or whatnot. Um, and op four puts one guy in the sector, it's automatically captured. Uh, otherwise, as long as there's defenders in the sector that are actively alive and on foot, they uh, up the attacking faction cannot take the sector itself. All right, maximum view distance is 1,500 meters. I don't think that's needed for this map. I think they could chop that down a little bit for frames, but, you know, dealer's choice. No magnified optics, otherwise it would say yes. When it's blanker says no, it means no. <clears throat> defenders, build points, stand member at 125, and no NVGs. Interesting. So I can't tell if Blue 4 gets one. It, usually it's listed as the AT and then the HE round. So according to this, it's saying there's one HE round and two A, um, excuse me, one AT round and two HE rounds, and Op 4 gets two AT and one HE round. All right. Blue 4, otherwise, they are the British paratroopers. Oh, fuck. This is the worst rated faction in all of FNF in terms of win to loss ratio. I have only seen these guys win, I think, once. And the reason for that is most of them get the FNF AL as their L1A1 rifle. So, Del Roque, you gotta find me and then just right click on my name and then you can shoot me a direct message. But I digress. The FNF AL is a 762 by 51 NATO 20 round battle rifle that does not allow for full auto. And almost every time I have seen it in combat, it fights an op for Russian faction, which in this case is gonna be communist militia, but they are... Oh! Oh! Bro! Fuck, I should have finished looking before I said anything. So the disadvantage here with the blue four guys was they would always make them fight AKMs, which were 30 round fully automatic 545. So you had semi auto versus full auto. Blue 4 got beaten out every time. And Naz has just told me to look at Op 4's weapons. Oh, you disgust me. That's awesome. Oh, my God. Anyway, let's get through this list. Yeah, no, you definitely balance those out then. I, I can see that. <laughs> All right, so Blue 4 getting the FNFAL, the model in L1A1, and the Colt Carbine for the leadership elements. And a Browning High Power for the secondary. Uh, you get a Bren light machine gun for your LMG, and then an FN Mag for your medium machine gunner. The M72A7 uh, for single shot disposable AT launcher for the light anti tank. Recon gets the M24 bolt action 762 by 51 NATO battle rifle as uh, their sniper rifle. And then the two suppressed shooters either get the choice of a suppressed M3A1, as I like to call the jungle carbine, or the M14 suppressed. And then they either get a choice of a Colt carbine or a Sterling SMG. Assets wise, Blue 4 gets three motorbikes, three other motorbikes, a tractor, yes, a Volga, hatchback, a Lada, an HMG uh, with, I don't think, a second gun. Oh no, it has the PKT on the front as well. Nice. And uh, two transport Land Rovers. Uh, otherwise, I'd imagine Blue 4's marksman rifle is going to be a Mark 11 or an M14. It's going to be a 20 round NATO battle rifle, but we'll go and check later. Op 4, meanwhile, your communist kits. These, uh, this is one of the new kits that have debuted today. Otherwise, they get SKSs, which are 10 rounds. <laughs> 7.62 by... F are they... No, they're 39, aren't they? Because it has an internal mag. Yeah, SKSs are 39. So, caliber advantage goes to blue 4, as well as magazine advantage of 20 round magazines versus 10 rounders. Oh, but... All of their machine gunners get PKPs. <laughs> I love this balance. Oh, this is wild. Like, I'm, I'm saying this in a good way, too. Like, this is pretty funny. So, like, they're, they're making up for the volume of fire through their machine gunners. I, I like that.
I actually do like that. You got some variety in these factions, which is going to make it more interesting when you pair them against different groups. But anyway, got RPG-26 says light anti-tank sniper gets the most Nagant, and then the two suppressed shooters get a choice of 45 round magazines for the AKS or 20 round mags for the AS Val. And then crew and aviation either get a drum mag PPSH or an AKS. That's beautiful. I'd imagine their marksman rifle is going to be either an M76 or an SVD. Assets wise, they got a battle bus. Yes. Uh, that soon pick up a Camaz, open truck, two open helixes, an old bicycle, a Skoda, another Skoda, an old tractor as well, three gas cars, uh, Volgas, excuse me, uh, two, four motorcycles, five ladders, a sedan, two miniature dishka pods, and a UAC dishka. Blue Force, the attacking faction, though. Interesting. All right. So, looking down, we're over at Op4 right now. We got Riccardi commanding, Guardian Xenon as the 2IC, that's a new name. And Fred as the Meta Colton commanding, Alpha HQ. He's got Azuki commanding, Alpha 1 with Wise, Sweet, Saddam, Tender Banner, and Potato. Ash leading Alpha 2 with Rory, Banks, Wheat, and Tackleberry, Arcor, and Gazog. Still Sitter leading Bravo HQ. Bravo 1 being led by Stark with Falcon, Dooley, and Bayon all together. Norris leading Bravo 2 with Bates, Nelson, Patriot, and Buckets together. Navy Chan leading Charlie HQ. Charlie 1 being led by Euro with Lesley. Uh, Yonosinu, Desi, um, Deska Keeper, and okay, they do have uh, Dragonoff Sniper Rifles. All right. Naders and Waldo, and then Steve leading Charlie 2 with Depso, Sushi Skip, Ace, and Sayak. We just had a name jump in here. Uh, I think it was Lakar 4. Otherwise, looking over at Blue 4. Blue 4 has Pierce commanding Shy leading Alpha. Uh, they didn't take an X ray team. Nice. So, um,. Shy leading, I'm going to talk about Pierce in a second, but Shy leading Alpha with Reaper, Sam, Mutants, Lolo, and uh, Galil. Looks like, yep, they've got a uh, Mark 14 with a bipod. So again, 762 by 51 NATO battle rifle there. Uh, Ant leading Nikolai, Pinty, Ruffus, and Hatseer, or Heartseer, excuse me, under Alpha 2. Morgan leading Bravo HQ, Bravo 1 being led by Lurch with Fonz. XD the and ripe here. Kazuo leading Bravo 2 with Colors, Fine Fin, Whiplash, Burton, Dobbs, and Nemesis. Uh, looks like all of Deltas merged together in Sanchez leading everyone with uh, Teleop, Mint, Hoba, Bendel, Cat, Roche, Firefly, Shun, Ducket, Azus, Renter, and Gav. And then Lusode leading a group named Blue Golf. You might have renamed it then. I don't know. Uh, otherwise, he's got Bro Hunter. Roderick, Thompson, Pete, Happy Farmer, and Gogu, and then Arma Jesus leading a Papega Pirates group of Kane, Artisan, Flux, K here, Roster, and Dream. All right, guys, place your bets. This could go either way. AO wise, Blue Force to take the Sector 1 area first, then Sector 2. We'll see if Op 4 decides to go for an all eggs and one basket strategy. But I'm going to be honest, guys, it is Pierce commanding. So be really careful, because sometimes his plans are very. Very difficult. So, we'll just have to see. Trying to gleam any other information from this roster. So, Scandi's on blue four, Papega's on blue four, Falcon and Bay are on op four as defenders though. So if they're in a position to counterattack, they'll do really well. But I mean, the weapon disadvantage here, Blue 4 having the numbers advantage and the weapon advantage, I think might actually allow for the 1980s British para faction to finally score another W. Oh, you're testing missions without X-Ray. Interesting. You're right, because I don't see X-Ray on either side. Neat. And yeah, because most of the time they're really useless, but also some of the FNF staff are saying that, you know, the suppressed shooter should be with the marksman, like, excuse me, the sniper in that squad, and it makes no sense. Uh, Della Rocco, give me till the end of this stream. That might be something on my end I have to switch, because sometimes Discord resets all of my settings. Anyone within my Discord should be able to DM me. So... It might be in your settings, though. Uh, you might have to set it to be able to take DMs from anyone within a certain Discord server. Ah, Discord, so fun. Let's try managing all of it, you know?
Well, Maz, I think that actually has a significant role to play in FNF is the proper use of your X-Ray team, because almost every match I've seen with a proper use of X-Ray is the team that wins, because they play X-Ray so fucking improperly every time. Um, if you don't like snipers on desert maps, then you shouldn't have the marksman either, because they can do whatever the sniper can do. But, I mean, in one of the more recent changes of the roster, they put marksmen in all the squads, so... I mean, where does the line go at that point, you know? But, I mean, I'm... I'm a Zeus. Yeah, I'm a Zeus. I don't do for this community, though. I only commentate. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I really want to see how these guys utilize their mortars. I trust Lusode might be able to do something here. And they're going to be hitting static positions, like sectors. So just aim for that sector. Literally, all they need is one dude to watch the mortars land, have a radio to communicate with the mortars themselves, and then just call in shots based off of where they are, you know, adjusting for fire and whatnot. We'll see what they do, though. Lone Wolfing is a rule break, but again, it's... Ah, that's a conversation for another day. Let's go for that. I'm really out of things to say for this AO. It's it's going to be a pretty simple blue four. Just going to push and hopefully utilize their mortar support. They should have the mortar stored in a vehicle. Purple man's back. Someone shoot him. Uh, they should put the mortars in one of the Vicks to move with the mortars. They can also keep them separate if they want to be worried about security. Uh, have the M2 Vic push behind the infantry line and maneuver it to positions where it can give some slight overwatch as they push. Op 4, all they need to do is make sure they use their fortify points to make their positions mortar resistant or even mortar proof by utilizing bunker textures and fencing the behind area. But I mean, these ridges should be pretty easy to hold overall. The one issue they're going to have, though, is uh, with all the SKSs down. So we'll just have to see how that goes. But, I mean, looking at this group right here, I'm actually not seeing a lot of SKSs. You know what I mean? I've only seen, like, two or three. So we'll see. A lot of AKs. Yeah, right on Del Roca. All Gucci. Op will start in a two minutes, I under. So unless you've got quick boot time, I don't think you're going to be able to make it for this one, buddy. Because I know you want to go AT some bitches. For our standard battle drill 1A. Cater, are you going to enlighten us with what a standard battle drill 1A is? One minute. Yeah, there's not really a lot of maneuvering room for Blue Four to make either. This is just a forced battle line push. So it's it's gonna be a quick 25 minute round. But I think the one mistake Op4 is making off the bat is, uh, I think actually no, their squads are forced to separate from each other. So these guys just need to go up and reinforce Sector 1. This just needs to be a reinforced Sector 1 holdout. Ah, uh, makes sense, Maz. Oh, patience is a virtue. All right, 
little axe spike there to initiate everything. You're also hearing some marksman shots immediately. Ah, because they're ranging their uh, marksman rifle there because they're going to totally use those to pick people off. Good call on Lolo, though, to get that pre-ranged. And you've got them taking parts of the mortar, so someone's going to need to pick up that base plate. This shows me they're going to actually walk with these then. So we'll see what they decide to do with them. Forward push until combat. Well, uh, then while the main contact group provides covering, the second group swings in flanks. Called a shift fire from squad one as the approach starts. I could see Pierce actually doing that properly. Because his options are really limited here. And he's a good commander and a good squad leader. Just Send sometimes comes up with some really outlandish plans. Now. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going, Liru? Hope you have been well. You know, Angel, it's been a hot second. I want to say for the past six or seven months, things have been really touchy and goy with a lot of things. But now everything's starting to settle down and I'm coming up on top. So, yeah, I hope you're doing well as well, man. I'm just going to be enjoying the peace while it lasts and going forward from there. But nonetheless, thanks for all your support. I hope you keep enjoying Friday Night Fights and I hope you keep enjoying everything else I do. Oh yeah, uh, Cater, usually after first uh, contact, logic starts going out the window and communications already went out the window 10 minutes ago. It's a good time. Oh, anytime, Cater. PVE, PVP, small scale, large scale, you name it. No plan survives first contact in anything of what you do. Improvise, adapt, overcome. But I always, oh my freaking God, they're bringing the damn track. I would love. In Arma 4, if you had the ability to turn out with, like, any weapon, why why did I hear an explosion? Oh. No. What? What did you do? Did you debt your own Vix? Yeah, okay. So you deaded the motorcycle. Cool. Because I was about to say, you better not have already killed yourself. But I want the ability for you to, like, pull your light machine gun out and mount it on your tractor as you go forward. Because that would be dope. Range fighting here. You already see some of the blood splatters being given to Op4 here. You've got AT loading. Is Falcon gonna go for it here? He's gotta be careful to backblast himself because he's in a little bit of a ditch. Rocket away. It's gonna be short, but it was close. Good round. Very hilly here. He's got some uh, terrain deficiencies to work with. Not bad, but this is why we need the Ander here. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it hit the tree. Ah, oh, that was close. Yeah, Angel, it's gonna be on the mods channel somewhere. Unfortunately, uh, I don't remember the exact date though. It's been a while. I'm sorry, sometimes I do yawn. It's a freaking. It's not because I'm tired, it's because I'm talking so much. So I can't get enough oxygen to my damn head. Heard another RPG. Three times the charm? It was high. But yeah, when I speak a lot and I speak fast, that depletes all the oxygen from my lungs. So my brain yawns to get all the oxygen back because I'm literally killing myself from lack of oxygen, slowly but surely. Oh, so like that. Because <clears throat> I literally ran out of oxygen and kept talking. Because why? We're a commentator. It's what we do. It's all about managing that oxygen outtake, uh, or intake and uh, outflow. All right. So you hear marksman rounds going off here. Or that might just be... Nope, that is the marksman. King with the marksman rifle. Who's trying to pick up what they can? Again, you gotta remember the uh, lines of uh, sight that we do from merging into their first person view 
uh, aren't exact 100%. So it's not going to look like he's on target, but he will still make on target shots. You actually have a guy dead up here. And the rest of Op4 is staying pinned down for the moment. Ah, uh, I don't know, Falcon. Uh, I Ender. You might need to go give Falcon some help. All right, so it looks like these guys are making the call to pull back. That's not a bad call. It looks like they only took one KIA, though. And it looks like they already left the server, too, because I don't see a skull. So... With all that going on... Shit, I'm sorry. See? See? It's just because I keep fucking talking. With all this going on, you already have Op4 now starting to suppress uh, Blue 4 line here. Because, yeah, they're just doing this massive unified battle line. Uh, trying to get some forces down to suppress certain elements so they can, you know, pin the defensive lines so the other element can come in. We just have to see what else gets brought in, but the UAZ dish is also being fielded at the moment. So we just gotta wait for Blue 4 to come up here, essentially. But, I mean, here is just gonna be a lot of blind firing until things can line up. The bank's just getting... Okay, no, I thought I saw his triangle disappear. I'm like, oh shit, did he actually get sniped there? Because this is, again, like the last round, going to be a pretty massive marksman fight. But there's more room for the attackers to move in. So when the attackers get close enough, they can start firing GL smoke into Op4's defensive line to move in, and then as the Blue 4 closes the distance, they can pop their handheld smokes and then get their forces right on top while maintaining perfect concealment here. You already see some of that GL smoke starting to come up onto these positions, but there needs to be more. Ooh, there we go. That was a great first mortar round. They just need to now adjust it and spread it around. But Op4 are in a lot of these tower areas. But it's going to really affect their sit-down miniature pods for the uh, Dishkas here. Now, we are seeing some knockouts here. Uh, it's only a knockout on Tiro over there. No kills. That's usually what you get with these long-range fights, though. It's just a lot of blind shooting. But Blue 4 with that mortar should be able to eventually force Op4 off this position. Here, another AT round going in. That hits in front of that UAZ. And it actually disabled the wheel. So it might have been an HE round, actually. Now they're putting GLs up there. Arcor throwing a charge a little over. He's trying to dead the Vic. But I don't think it's going to be close enough to do any damage. Yep. Great thinking, though. But I think he also died doing that. Yeah. So I appreciate the doubling back to deny assets uh, from the enemy's clutches, but I don't think that was worth your life. But I appreciate the thinking. So Op4 is doing a great job here because they need to prevent Blue 4 from maneuvering. So everywhere they're seeing movement right now, they're denying it. And now you've got more Op4 elements starting to create a battle line back here on the left. That's going to stop more Blue 4 from coming up. Now you just need to see the marksman perform. But at the same time, for Blue 4 to alleviate this position, they just need to start mortaring that defensive line. So we need to see more rounds go in. But if Op4 can utilize their uh, few forces here, which they got a lot on reserve on a rear defensive line here. So eventually that line's going to cover these guys' retreat into the final sector. But... Until that happens. Yeah, that is a ranging smoke round. They can also use smoke to obscure the defensive line instead of the UGL smoke to allow more room for their forces to come in as well. Now it's just the waiting game of the defensive line. I do like seeing these types of ops once in a while, but they're a little boring to cast because it's just a matter of keeping defenses down. 
Great HE round right there. I think it landed just on the front of the Hesco barrier, though, which unfortunately negated most of the damage. So Hop 4 are really starting to take casualties. They even lost Bayant over on the corner. We're down to five or six guys dead. Blue 4 only losing the Delta lead. And a lot of Alpha 2 got caught by that, uh, I want to assume the Dishka miniature pod. But no, he doesn't have the kill, so I don't know who got those. But both sides are taking casualties. Blue 4 has definitely slowed down a lot of their momentum. But now you're going to start seeing Bravo funneling around. You're going to see Alpha starting to push that line. We need to see a few more HE rounds of some sort. Uh, some sort. Some sort. Ah! Ay, ay, ay. I do appreciate we're seeing some explosions happening over here. That might be more Op 4 HE rounds coming in. Uh, UGLs, probably from Bravo 1. And now you're seeing some more HE firing over here as well. So both sides doing a good job with their explosive rounds here. Was that friendly already landing on Alpha? I thought that was a GL though. I mean, technically a mortar round is uh, regarded as indirect fire. The definition of indirect fire is when you're not firing directly at your opponent, you're firing in the air and hoping it hits your opponent. So GLs would also count as indirect fire because you're not aiming at your enemy, you're aiming at the approximation of your enemy by launching something into the air catapult style. Your UGL is a trebuchet. Your mortar is a trebuchet, change my mind. HE round landed a little off as well. It's the same spot they ranged it on earlier. They didn't make any proper adjustments. As I say that, more rounds coming in on the right. I don't know why both mortars are firing at the same time either. They should really be trying to space those out like that. Another one coming in, another one going to the left. Again, it's over right. Oh no, that just got it, dude. How are these two rounds gonna go? They adjust? Let's see it. Nope, still far. All right, Blue Force starting to breach in. They're throwing explosives into these bunkers. I mean, you can clear them out with grenades now. It's nice, because grenades, you know, used to not be able to do it. They'd have to use explosive charges or satchels. Got Azuki trying to get some uh, marksman kills up here. He's unable to line that shot up. But yeah, you got a gap in Blue Force line. Uh, excuse me, Op Force line that's being made. Now Blue Force starting to push it. Op Force is going to start folding off the defensive positions to deal with that incursion. That's going to allow for Bravo to continue riding the border over there and eventually come up that side. Might see Falcon Stark and Blam close the gap here and pinch the Blue Force units that have pushed in here. Oh, great GL shot but it just wasn't effective there. I got another GL way over ranged. Huh. I don't get why the mortars were shot that far. If they got friendly forces in the zone, they don't have any confirmation that there's bad guys here. Maybe they're thinking Op4 is immediately gonna pull away. So they're uh, firing as Op4 is expected to pull out. I would think you don't wanna waste the HE shells to do that though. But yep, here's the pinch now. I think these three blue four guys are in trouble because they're fighting some of the best here. You got Stark, you got Blam, you got Falcon. And Holton just ended one of those dudes. Sam coming up as well. Could get some flanking shots on Stark or Blam if he sees it. Grenade thrown out here. Shy getting knocked out by Stark there, Reapers. Has been spotted, he takes rear shots, blanket shots by Falcon and is eventually taken out. I think he was able to get one hit on uh, Stark right there, but that was it. Sam also got taken out, possibly by Blammer Stark there as well. And now this group's gonna get bitch. Shy wakes back oh, uh, up only to get bitch slapped by Stark. Uh, no, Sam's run around over here and he's continuing to breach this line. Grenade's being thrown, that bunker should protect Sam. 
Oh, see if Sam comes around, he'll be able to get a great shot in Gazog here. Can he save Mute? He does. Killery Clinton style. Potato now sees Sam. Sam getting caught on that area. He quickly runs back in though. Got some rear shots over here. Swege is taking out a friendly. Why did he just kill a friendly? Um. Yeah, he's got negative one. I don't know what he just did. Dreamer just messaged me to say the PKM sucks ass. Kazag managed to kill Sam there. Poor Dream. Mutant now running around. Start covering this area. Falcon flanking around. They've successfully repelled the first attack, but there's going to be a lot more now because this has caused Op4 to fold in. And now Blue4 is finishing up their encirclement. But if Op4 can get a good chunk of kills here and still go positive on the remaining KDs here. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say there's six guys in the AO. If Op4 is able to kill more than six people, um, I think they'll be good. Because by now, they've pretty much whittled down most of Blue 4's number advantage on the top, but it's the bottom sections I'm worried about. Op4 still taking a lot of damage here, but I think they can all get turned around because you still have these defensive lines here. And you have Charlie 2 also coming up to reinforce as well. Now this is where it's gonna get really messy though, is you got a pincer starting to start right here. Op4 is going to be divided amongst two positions. You still got HP Mutant in here. Grenades being thrown in. That's going to alert Op4. There's still more action to be had. Yep, Falcon is over there as Mr. Pinoy Power. Because the word Falcon's cut off from the not Falcon. Saddam and Holt trying to hold back. Uh, they just got knocked out. Casual. Nemesis with the rear flank. Annihilates that guy. There might have actually just been some blue on blue by Gazog, though. And now you have Mutant also blue on blueing. What? Gazog, I think, redded on redded there. And Mutant just blue on blue. Satchel's blindly thrown. That position's cleared out. Mutant got spotted and taken out. Not before he got something in here. I think that's a smoke grenade, though. Swede now coming around. Uh, Dobbs forgets how to pull the trigger, I guess. Or got caught in a lag spike by Dream getting kicked off because, you know, Dream's not good. <laughs> JK. We love Dream. Grenade spam being thrown. That might catch T-Row out of position. There it is. Took a second. Uh, I think he was also losing connection down there, but that's beside the point. Sweet now coming around. And rape. Wh what? What? Right Pierce, like, wait a minute. What, that was a bad guy? I didn't realize that was a bad guy. Huh. I got Stark moving up. I gotta write that timestamp down. Oh, man, there goes, uh, no, wait, that was another dude. Falcon coming around, hitting Reaper there. So he gets another kill. Whiplash is throwing some grenades back at him. This is a great counter pincer on one of the two pincers because the other groups moved off. So Blue Four is bypassing this AO because they expected their other half to take it. This is causing Blue Four to be defeated in detail and Op4 might be able to just keep them pinned on sector one. It's tough though because some of Op4 is pulling out of the sectors. Falcon gets picked off by Flux. Papega Pirates. Thankfully there, oh, there is not a medic nearby. We'll see if he wakes up. Rory coming in, clearing house a bit more. Start coming back around again. Trying to kill Mutant in here. But is unable to find the shot. So he's gonna pop a fresh mag, maybe go on that trench again. Gets the headshot on Mutant. Nemesis in the bunker, Rory trying to come around with that PKP. Or it's a PKM, excuse me. Nemesis coming out, and he takes a face full of PKM to the freaking... <laughs> oh my god, he's done the the split here. Ouch. Sark now taking fire from Platoon moving up with the Mortar Crew, which I think is that custom group named Blue Golf. But now is Op4 going to abandon this sector, or are they going to continue to push? Because now things are just trickling in back and forth. But numbers-wise, I think Op4 has that advantage at this point. 
We're only 20 minutes in. The fighting is still going to be focused on this, but if Blue Fort continues to bypass and go for the remaining groups, uh, they're just going to keep defeating themselves in detail here. And it's not going to work out for them. Another explosion just happened. I actually didn't catch that. That might have just been uh, trapped somewhere. Whiplash and Falcon in a 1v1. Falcon, he hears you. Yeah. Point blank against Whiplash with the 240. I don't think anyone could really win that fight at CQC. Because I'm knocking Rinser out, but then he gets taken out by Cat. Stark now moving over to the gunfire. He's on four kills with the GL. Still got Rory in the sector so he can afford to let it go. Rory's probably just going to corner camp at this point. I don't blame him. That's that's the best he can do. But Stark might be able to come around and get a nice flanking shot with that GL. Takes out Mitten. Throws a satchel charge. Overthrows it. Blue Four is really confused. Rinser gets caught right here. Gets Rinser. That 240 Bravo Stark has a little bit of an advantage here, but Cat's trying to close the distance. He's now taking fire from that uh, Overwatch group. Cat's caught reloading, Stark takes him out. Now Gav is shooting at him, and Bendel gets the headshot. That was a great play, because even though Stark died, he managed to knock out quite a few guys there. He's doing the dab with his legs. <laughs> what, Green Neko? Sorry, I'm commentating here. Uh, what's up? Falcon killed by a Portuguese man in the dark forest. Mm. <laughs> All right. I mean, looking at the map here, Blue Fours. I mean, Op Four, the numbers are looking pretty even right now. Sorry to flash. Because Blue Four is uh, starting to encircle everything on the remainder of Sector 1. Op 4 are holding the support group back here. So they could have counterattacked and dealt with some additional forces pushing in. But I, I think Blue Four might be able to turn around and get that advantage again. Oh, Neko, no. I'm just speaking too much and my brain is making me yawn. It's all good. Are you winning, son? I don't know, I enter it's still anyone's game, but this is gonna be a longer round because Blue Four are being slow on their moving. Is that UAZ still driving? No, it's stuck on a tree. Amazing. So they're gonna have to spend another two or three minutes, up to five to ten, to find Rory and eliminate him. Op four are just gonna pull everything back to the final defensive line. This is gonna stall for time. Which is kind of annoying because this is meant to be a smaller AO. Rory parks, pokes his head out. Porks his head out. Cute. <laughs> Did he just... He just killed himself with the boss! Oh, he just... He just fucking iced himself with the fucking boss! Rory gets his second kill! Whiplash now! Oh my god! He freaking tops him with that! Oh! Oh my god! You got to admit, that was pretty fucking... A lot of zany shit just happened there. Ah, oh. My god. Scandy supremacy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you just find a little corner that he's on and shoot him through... He could, with the 240 Broadway, would have been able to penetrate the wood anyway, but he just... Uh, Built through the corner, um, fired through the corner. So I was also reading, uh, Meat of Meat saying, <clears throat> built different. Honestly, the shit Scandi pulls. I'd really love to see Scandi try OFCRA because you're allowed to do like tree stuff in there too. And all this other crazy bonkers stuff. I actually posted a clip of a guy named Nubass in OFCRA causing such a massive amount of confusion by uh, camping in a tree and just murdering anyone who came into the sector. It was great. 
All right, but Blue 4 now has to reposition to go on the offensive for the second sector. Op 4 is making this thin defensive line, which I wouldn't recommend they do. They just pull back and have everything on defense. Um, but yeah, Blue 4 needs to move their mortars up, set those up, mortar everything in that sector, keep a few rounds on standby to use against that final defensive line that's being made by Charlie 2, uh, and then move in. But the numbers are very low on both sides. So this is going to be a slow migration thing. I wish I could, I ender, but uh, my carpet flooded. So, you know, not much I can do in that regard. So now we're probably going to have five minutes of downtime before combat is reinitiated because Blue 4 is going to reconsolidate and then push, and then Op 4 is still trying to decide what they're going to do defensive line wise because you got Vix going back and forth as they try to decide everything. I'm going to have a sip of water. I'm sure there's a hydrate somewhere that I never cashed in that a fan gave. And, you know, we're, we're cashing that in now. How, um, how so, Maz? Because I can't think of any major differences other than NA tends to be more Milsim players. But otherwise, yeah, no, because Scandi Recon and uh, Papega do play a lot more fast and loose compared to, uh, whatchamacallit, the Milsim group. So, yeah, no, it's, it's a little more fast and loose in EU compared to NA. Yeah, EU so much more wacky and comes. Exactly, that's because you have Scandi Recon and Papega just derping around. Intoxication? Meat, what are you drinking? I'm debating if I should have a drink for NA as well, but... I don't want to be tipsy tonight. I still have chores to do, and there's uh, a few things I'm going to get into anyway. Moonshine's pretty dope. Literally, Zerg rushes and memes play 100% of all EU rounds. Yeah, I'm not surprised, but then you get these moments where the attacking faction has to pick up the pieces and continue on. It just takes a while for them to go through. Uh, Luso, the Mortars, I think, actually got a kill. Uh, but otherwise, they've been mostly ineffective because Op4 has made some really good defensive positions that have been Mortarproof. Um... Uh, I think if the smoke rounds were used a little bit more, they were used for ranging HE shots, which was pretty cool. But they could have also used that smoke to just uh, uh, obscene the uh, defensive positions that Op4 had. And I think Blue4 would have been able to take this position with fewer casualties. So we still have a few Papega guys alive. We have a lot of 1RW guys alive. We got Command alive in Lolo, who's a marksman. He's up four kills, by the way, so that's not too, too bad. Op4 is still their commander, their entire command team alive, and they've got all of Charlie alive. I'd say Blue 4 has a slight number advantage, but we'll see what happens. Now we're starting to see more combat after three minutes of passing. This is Papega spearheading here. We'll take it as a learning experience against uh, Luso. You know, for them, but wow. All right, so one of the Blue 4 guys is just picked up by a machine gun. So Roster, he's got a Marksman Rifle and a Maz, man. What a Chad. Regular Hydrate, you got it. Right, Oluso, thanks for dropping by. There will always be another chance with FNF. There's six rounds every week, you know? There will always be that second chance. Ah, Posture Check, goddammit. Yeah, so... I expected these Op4 guys to get steamrolled, but literally, Blue4 is doing a massive column push. Which is allowing these five guys, which I think just turned into four, 
to actually get some decent stopping power in here. Oh no, it's still five. I'm just uh, off by one. You can't do this job with a dry throat, that's for sure. And that can actually be taken. You know what? Never mind. Everyone, forget I said that. Because I know what some of you are going to say after I make that comment. Op force counterattacking with five dudes. The fucking balls. I'm surprised they can move from the weight of their damn balls here. You're literally going to... Uh, <laughs> I want to see it. I, this is either going to blow up in their face or Blue 4 is going to be stopped right here because of how deployed their forces are in this massive column formation. Now it's starting to force other forces to flank around, I, which is just separating them more, allowing for more room for Op 4 to gain more kills here and wrestle the number advantage away from Blue 4. This is just bonkers, but I... Uh, it's hard to tell if this is either being ordered at by Pierce or if these are just groups fending for themselves. Mm, does Arma Jesus spot Sushi? No, does Sushi spot Arma Jesus? Little branches in the way. Oh, kneeled right into his head. Wait a second, was his head spinning? Literally sent his head spinning there. You're down to four as Armored Jesus pushes and goes, fuck that. Screw flanking. We can just kill him. Easy. I'm just distracted thinking about tonight. Yep. That's generally how it works. What the hell is tonight? <laughs> All right, so Armored Jesus, he's a member of Papega Pirates. He is someone to really get that CQC. I just love how he made Kabooby face his face go Kabooby. <laughs> Popped it like a balloon, but he is only Uncon. We'll see if he wakes back up. And he got Skip trying to give some shots out here with that uh, SKS, and he gets headshotted by the machine gun. Ace wakes back up. Despo trying to put round sound range. He is shot in the back and pinned before he can go around and hit Jesus with that PKM. GL round knocking out Ace again. And the five man team has faltered. Grenade being thrown to the top. I'm so confused with what Chad is saying. But anyway. Messiah getting headshotted. You know, this actually might play to time because Blue 4 might get repelled and not have enough forces to push the Sector 2 with 17 minutes. I, I think this is going to go down at least to the final 10 minutes at this rate. Neko, can you stop being horny in this chat? Why are there so many people with the name Neko in their name that always come into my chat and act horny? Just keep it to your DMs. Yes, I can confirm your gender, but why? Why do people look to hook up in my freaking chat channel? Just, just take it somewhere else, please. Y'all! <laughs> God damn it. I get it. This round is slow. Well, that doesn't mean you gotta be... This is why we have the horny bonk emote. Why aren't we spamming that right now? What happened to that? We'd had that months ago. You call stream sniping on who? Jesus? 
Because I'm going to be honest with you. He is that good. Anyone of Papega or Scandi. I would rate Papega over Scandi in terms of that individual aggressiveness. Is that good? The only other three people I know of that are that good are actually four. In order, it would be Bay, Falcon, Stark, and Maz. But anyone from Papega, because Papega are just a bunch of fucking memers. God damn it, Green. Oh, yeah, no, Hunter, that was a while ago. Was it? Were Bloodwing sat on my lap, or are we thinking about a different one? Well, no, I under, I said Scandi Recon or Papega, but we're talking about Papega in this instance because Armored Jesus is part of Papega. But yeah, no, Bloodwing's at an anime convention right now. Guardy's pulling back. Firefly isn't able to connect the shot. Now we're getting some final combat here. 14 minutes remaining. Timer is counting down on the bottom left. Red almost gets shot, but he's saved by Firefly running into Shun's line of fire, causing him to stop. Little micro mistake there. Now we're seeing grenades throw. That one's gonna go a little far back. Does some damage, but doesn't provide anything substantial. Actually blew up one of the vehicles chilling here, causing another Vic to explode. A little bit of a hazard. Ace comes up, gets Tela up, tries to line up a shot on Mitten. I think Mitten noticed him. So he's pushing the tree as Ace tries to flank around. SKS versus Aw, oh, the SKS wins. And you're still having the vehicle daisy chain back here. Oh dear. HE round just, I don't know if that was a friendly firing it or what, but, huh. Yeah, I think they put all these vehicles around on purpose and they have explosive traps down to detonate and cause uh, chain reactions. 13 minutes remaining. Blue four on the mortars. They need to launch. Oh, they're launching. They're launching smoke rounds. Nah, you're good, Knight. I got really, really confused. Ah, oh, man. I need to text someone about that. Deska Keeper getting shot at by Arma Jesus, but he's able to roll in the cover. Another HE round going on to Nader's position, but the Hesco absorbed most of that shot. It's off, though, because it uh, looks like they weren't ranging the smoke rounds in. Here's the thing. You don't want to keep firing on the same spot. You want to make little micro adjustments as you do it to spread the rounds out, because otherwise, if they're off, they're all off. Eleven minutes to go. Blue 4 has the number advantage, but... Op force counterattacking where they need to, and they're being ineffective in Op force favor. Or did better, their ineffectiveness to hit the AO with their specialized assets is working to Op force advantage. And so you got some blue four guys coming around over here. Euro is 
going to be playing this defensively still. They got to be careful about the vehicles, but we got Riccardi and Yuru up here. They're going to wait for Blue Four to trickle in so they can get shots on. Yeah, they're still all landing over here. They need to fold those in because this is just being useless at that point. Like, if it was on target in the actual AO, I get it, but... You know, it's just on the edge. They need to give it a bigger spread because the wind spread is only going to be up to, you know, 10 meters. Did his gun just go click, click because he tried to shoot at someone? Is he out of ammo? I got this massive charge going. Riccardi gets a kill. Oh my god, Riccardi with the dodge. Oh, but it's not enough because he got caught in the rock. Blue 4 doing this final smoke push, though. I think this is it. Yuru knocking out Armages with some rear hits here. Bendal and Gav get knocked out by Lakar 4. Yuru needs to sweep around and start engaging on the rear to catch these remaining blue four guys out. Explosive trap goes off. I think it, yeah, it did get a few people. At least it doubled, no, Armages woke back up. Trying to put some shots on Yuru, I think. He's trying with his handgun now, but Yuru's dodging. Grenades being thrown. Bendel, okay, no, that grenade was further back. Nader's knocking Godu out as he also takes fire from Leziak. Nader's popping attack reload. Checks his left. Runs up to the body. Takes fire from Happy. And then he rolls into Nader's gunfire. All right, Yuru got taken out. But this machine gun of the car for is able to get another kill on Blue 4 here. Eight minutes remaining. Op 4 down to five defenders. Blue 4 attacking with five, six, seven, eight, nine guys remaining but they're broken up a little bit. Lolo trying to get some marksman shots. Got some hits on Yusanu. But both got uh, hit in that little firefight there. Pierce Command killed that. Uh, wait, killed by that? What do you mean by that, Maz? Damn it, stomach. Beautiful bounce on that grenade that might get him. Yeah. Oh, lucky bounce on that tree. Getting it right up on uh, that guy's position and basically blowing him up. Great grenade throw by Lolo. We are now down to three active op four with one downed op four in the zone in addition. Uh, Leziak wakes back up, who was uh, down up there as the down guy. So three op four in the zone, one out of the zone to flank. Arma Jesus is still alive and Lolo is still alive. They've been doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Lolo we haven't seen much of, but he's on six kills right now. He's dropped that marksman rifle. And then Arma Jesus we've been watching. He's on five kills. Oh, beautiful grenade throw. That locked out the car for an hour, just down to three op four guys in the zone. Armageddon Jesus is indeed just that good. Six. Orc Warboss, yeah. thanks for the 16 month on resub. A grenade throw. I know, Already right? Liking what I see. The grenade throws have been beautiful this round. Last round they were a little hit or miss, but this one they've picked up. one guy literally in the middle of that that was a great explosive trap play but i think the trigger man just got killed so now it is a 1v7 i i think this is it it's gonna go to overtime oh god damn it stop it i'm gonna have to go eat something 
Have you ever, like, this is weird too, because I had lunch today, but have you ever had it where your stomach just starts making those, like, painful grumbles? And the only way to say it is by eating something, because otherwise... Ugh. I once pushed through it and streamed with it, and it was really, really annoying. I was really distracted by everything, so I might not cover round three just because I want to go take care of that. I'm sorry to say, another hydrate. But I'll cover rounds one and two and maybe three of NA, and then, you know, do Daisy after. Shut up! Someone bonk Neko! Christ. Alright, is Lolo gonna be the one to get kill? Oh no, it's Firefly's kill count. I was about to say, seven kills, that's because Firefly also blew up a vehicle early on. Yeah, kill him for seven. Thank you, Don. Waldo trying to engage Pete. He gets pinned. Grenade is thrown. Now he's being blue on blue. A little bit of a saving grace here. How's that goes? Mortar, they burned all the ammo. It landed outside the sector, and then they pushed up on foot. That was uh, three people that were coming in. Grenade gets bounced off that dead tree. Pete's now running up, only to get take fire, but then they realize he's a friendly Pete now charging up this position. And Waldo waits a little too long, but he eventually gets it. Pete was able to get some shots in. Firefly heard those shots. I'm waiting to see someone get on top of this position and take him out. That's going to be Firefly. Rose trying to get the shot there. He's got like an AK or a PK. No, he's got the 240. Um, excuse me, the FN mag. It's the same thing as the 240. Just a different thing. Similar platform. I'm really surprised we're not seeing anyone else push. Firefly got knocked out. Thompson's now looking around. They're allowing this to be a one-on-one -on -one fight. Now, Pete, I think, woke up taking fire from the rear. Now we're seeing shots everywhere. And that is GG at the three-minute mark. All right. I got to go eat something. So I'm going to end the stream here. When we get back, we're going to be doing the NA branch, and then I'll try to do some Daisy as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Go operate operationally. We'll be back in about three hours. Otherwise, take care and have a good one. Thank you for watching.